we are back. We are off of vacation. We're no longer in Daytona Beach. We're here for Please. UFC Rio Rancho. Getting excited for eh, another great card after UFC 247 that was eh, not all that great. But Matt, our first fight on the prelims, we have a banger at 125 pounds. I get excited about ranked flyweights when they go at it. And yeah, listen, Mark De La Rosa and Hallie and Paiva both on two fight losing streaks. And it's weird to see a fighter that's only had two fights in the UFC and lose both of them being ranked. But from what we've seen from Paiva so far in his young UFC stint, he's looked great. I mean, he fought Kai Kara France to a split decision loss, of course. But he outstruck Kai Kara France in that fight. He got taken down. But again, the percentage of takedowns for France in that fight was 28%. He looked good. The takedown defense was decent. And we know that he's a very good striker, of course. His eyebrow evaded him in his last one, a gruesome injury, but he's back in here. Take it on a tough out in Mark Del Rosa. Oh, yeah. And this is a guy that's two and three in the UFC, but the three losses, Tim Elliott. And then he takes on another tough out in, in Alex Perez. And then after that, Kai Care France. So you can't really, you know, fault him for that. He's fought at 35 and 25. And this is, again, one of those guys, and we like to bring this up. He's one of those guys you can see setting himself up well after fighting in somewhat of a coaching role. He's only 25 years old, but you see him cornering a lot of different fighters. His wife is, of course, on this card as well. But Matt, where we have Piva is quite a good and accomplished striker. Mark Del Rosa is kind of like a, a Swiss Army knife. He's good at a lot of different things. Can you walk us through a, a Mark Del Rosa type fight and what he needs to do to get a win here? So Del Rosa can stand with Piva. It's not that big of a death sentence to stand. I know you've got the stats, but a lot of both guys' fights end in the decision. And for you to be able to win a decision against Mark Del Rosa, you're going to have to be able to defend the takedown at some point because we've kind of seen Piva. He'll get off to a really good start. He'll damage his opponent and just kind of coast for the last two rounds. And in his mind, he'll be like, oh, well, I won the fight if you will, because it'll inflict a lot of damage early on. And then he won't really do a lot for the last kind of 10 minutes. He'll be somewhat inactive. So that's something you really have to watch out for. And just the fact that both guys are sort of decision fighters, you're not going to see a finish probably in this fight. Uh, I personally side a little bit with Mark Del Rosa, just due to the grappling especially, because we've kind of seen the one weakness that Paiva has is his takedown defense. And the fact that Mark Del Rosa is such an accomplished grappler, I feel like it's going to give him quite a bit of an edge in this fight. And on Mark Del Rosa's record, quite a few submissions. If we can run through the numbers quickly, though, and to your point, I mean, out of these guys combined 29 wins, 16 of them are by decision. If you look over at the odds, Paiva's actually a minus 210 favorite. And Mark De La Rosa, a plus 170, which is interesting. We like to bring in these Tapology numbers because there's so many fans that are out there and are voting on it. Out of 559 votes on Tapology, 56% are going with De La Rosa, the underdog. And out of them, 80 Three percent are picking De La Rosa to win by decision. Do you agree with that? And if so, how do you see this one playing? I do. Out? I just think anytime you have two guys who are more likely to go to a decision, more likely than not, the wrestler's going to get the decision nod. Just due to the fact that when you really think, okay, what do wrestlers do well? They have good cardio and they can control the fight. And those are really all you need to win a decision, especially at 125. There's not a lot of real dangerous knockout artists at that weight class. So I feel like Mark De La Rosa is gonna be able to sort of grind out a decision win. It should be a fun fight though. Both guys put on great performance. I mean, if De La Rosa is able to grind one out, get him into the clinch up against the cage. And control the octagon in general. I could definitely see a way for Mark De La Rosa to win, but with Paiva in this one, he's going to have a two inch uh, advantage in height. He's going to have four and a half inches of reach. Leg reach is about the same, but he's a very volume heavy guy. And if he can keep that pace and keep it going quite well, again, it's unfortunate that when he fought at the, the tail end of the summer, the injury, but he's had all sorts of time to get octagon ready. I think Paiva is going to be able to get the win. I'm going to side with a somewhat heavy favorite, a two to one favorite here. But Matt, you're not going to want to miss our Fight Night Picks predictions for UFC Rio Rancho here with Fight Night Picks on YouTube, Matt. Let's get into it.